now on, the only person you can show yourself around is me. Oh, I'm, I'm good. Now I'm good, thanks. There's a war raging on our planet. If this criminal isn't found, that war may find its way here. Is there anyone that can help you? Do you have a family? Oh, who would be? They're calling an army. I've seen firsthand these things really are. Bumblebee, there is only one way to end this war. You must protect Earth and its people. Take it down! My back, me! This is how we stop them. You've got me. And I'm not going anywhere. Hey everybody, it's Charlie. We got to break down this new Bumblebee trailer. So if you didn't see, whole bunch of classic Gen 1 Transformers, Soundwave, Shockwave, we finally got Optimus Prime. We knew he was going to be in the movie somehow, but not one of the biggest characters because it's mostly supposed to be a prequel all about Bumblebee's character. So I'll talk about plot in a second. We'll talk about the Gen 1 Transformers first. So if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. This is coming out around the same time that Aquaman is coming out. So there are a couple big movies coming out in December this year. But the big things first, it seems like what they're showing us is, is when Bumblebee is on planet Earth with Haley Steinfeld's character, who's also named Charlie, named like my name, the Decepticons and the Autobots back on Cybertron are still in the middle of their final war. It's the fall of Cybertron, effectively, and you're starting to see the beginnings of the Great Migration of all of them to planet Earth, both the Autobots and the Decepticons. So we get a much better look at classic Cybertron than we've ever gotten in the movies before. So you have to think of this as like a complete top to bottom redesign of the way they visualize that. It looks so much better than the Michael Bay redesign that he did way back in 2006 with his first Transformers film. I think they were trying to make it edgy, put a whole bunch more sex in it, but that's not really what Transformers is about, like hot chicks in short pants. It's mostly about the Autobots and the Decepticons. So I think that maybe when they first launched the franchise, they were worried that people wouldn't be down for that in live action. But the special effects have gotten so much better that it's a lot easier for them to do the transformations and do really cool classic versions that pop on screen a lot more. So everything is cranked way up and it looks much closer to the original cartoon than anything else that we've seen before. So it feels like this visual style is the future of the franchise. Like just set all the sequels that they do for this movie or any other spin-off movies set during the 80s so they can keep these Gen 1 designs. People will be like, why didn't they just do this to begin with? We should have been doing it this way the whole time. You all probably spotted some of the bigger classic Transformers and Decepticons. We finally get an accurate version of Soundwave. Ravage is the dog that jumps out of him and starts running after the Autobots. This is Shockwave and his Seekers. These Decepticon jets that transform on Cybertron, those are just Cybertronian jets, that's all they're called. They're part of the Seekers. We get classic Optimus Prime, both in the hologram, E.T. phone home, like the whole movie feels like E.T. the extraterrestrial with Bumblebee's character. So there's that funny twist on the idea of the Decepticons phoning home. They're trying to call an army to Earth, you have to stop them. So this sort of gives you the stakes of the film. Obviously the Decepticons try to trick the military, John Cena, Sector 7, that's who these people are, into hunting down Bumblebee so that they can bring their Decepticon army to Earth. So it's them sort of playing both sides. This fugitive could bring our war to your planet. Better kill him. Make sure to shoot on sight. Don't ask him any questions. Don't let him try to explain everything. Just nuke him from orbit. One bummer though, they did confirm that the Decepticon that we thought was going to be original Starscream is actually Blitzwing. So because we see Optimus Prime on Cybertron during that big war, maybe we'll see Starscream, maybe we'll see classic Megatron during that big fight. But they're not meant to be main characters during the film. 
These two Decepticons that try to trick John Cena's character into hunting down Bumblebee, this is Dropkick and Shatter. Shatter's voiced by Angela Bassett, she's the red one. The blue one, Dropkick, is played by Justin Thoreau. Barricade is also supposed to be in the film too. And then obviously, like I said, during the big Cybertron battle sequences, anything is fair game. There could be just a whole bunch of really tiny Autobots and Decepticons that you guys know that are in the background shots. But some of the trailer you've already seen before, it's Haley Steinfeld's character on her 18th birthday going to get a new car, obviously meant to mirror Sam Witwicky during the first film. Like over the last trailer, they replayed that Bernie Mac audio clip from the original movie. I'm sure there'll be a whole bunch more Easter eggs for that first 2006 Transformers film, even though I'm hoping that this is going to be a soft reboot of the franchise. The dam seems like it's going to be John Cena's Sector 7 base. They're sort of like that paramilitary organization. Much better shot of Cybertron as it's slowly getting ripped apart. So this is probably right at the tail end of the Cybertronian Wars. You have to remember that by the time we picked up in that 2006 Transformers film, it had already fallen. So all the Autobots had been making their way to planet Earth. Then over the course of the franchise, you would have stragglers sort of come in. Like, oh, hey, we've been in outer space this whole time. So we heard the Autobots call to come back. It's hard to tell which character this is that's leaving Cybertron. It could be Bumblebee's character. It could be another character. But I love the way they cut it in that misleading way when you see that Decepticon fall from the sky and land right on top of that car, like implying that it's going to turn into that car. Another shot of the Golden Gate Bridge, just giving you an idea that this is set in the San Francisco area. If you've been watching all the Venom trailers, they all prominently feature shots of the Golden Gate Bridge, just because it's really cinematic and it lets you know exactly where it's taking place. Whole bunch of chase scenes, then obviously they eventually get captured by John Cena's Sector 7, they start to take them down. You see this big fight here with what looks like a giant antenna device. This might be what the Decepticons are trying to use to call the rest of them to planet Earth. Then you get that funny tag at the end where Bumblebee is acting like a cat or a dog trying to make it through the door here, just being all cute. This is like them going full E.T., where E.T. acts a little bit like a best friend and a pet at the same time, like, oh, look at how cute they are. But let me know in the comments, what do you actually want them to do with the future of the franchise? I know everybody's still waiting for a couple of really big characters. Like, we really want to see classic Megatron turn into the gun. We want to see classic Starscream. There's still a lot of favorites out there. So what'll happen is, is when we get closer to the movie, I'll do my non spoilery review like I would normally do. Obviously, Venom is coming up in a couple weeks, so there'll be more footage for that dropping soon. There's a new Spider-Man Far From Home video that I'm working on, so that should be up in a little while. But leave all your requests in the comments below. Click here for an official synopsis for the new Black Widow Phase 4 movie and click here for that brand new Venom trailer. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.